Welcome to the second part of Liquid's introduction. Just a quick reminder that we set up two emitters. So we have the pick geo and use flip fluid from object and we have emitter geo which we used emit particle fluid on and this is the outcome. So the next step is adding colliders and this is quite simple. So let's create another geometry network. I'll rename this one to collision Geo, I hope that's how you spell it. Uh, let's zoom in, dive in. And in here, you can either create the container from scratch. So you can, for example, use the workflow uh, from my another tutorial on creating containers for simulations. So using Curve and Revolve, or you can import a file. So this is what we'll do because I've already created, prepared my file. So file note, and in here, click on the icon. It should take you straight to your project folder if you set it correctly. And I know that I uh, saved my container in the Geo folder. So that's container one. I'll just accept. All right. So here is my container. And first you can see that it's floating. Uh, so we need to fix that. And of course, when you import file, uh, whether it's from Maya, ZBrush or any other 3D software, you need to make sure that you use convert node just to make sure that this is a polygon mesh or polygon, okay? Uh, then you can also use something called poly, poly reduce. So if you're using models from ZBrush, they will have quite high poly count. So you can use poly reduce to lower the quality of this container of the geometry. If you want to increase the quality of the container, you can use something called subdivide. Okay, so let me plug it in quickly, display subdivide, and now you can see that we can add more subdivisions here, but I do not want that. Okay, and I'll also get rid of poly re reduce. And after the convert node, I'll create a transform node. And I just need to make sure, so display it, I just want to make sure that the container sits nicely on the ground. So I'll use this simple expression, you might already know it, minus dollar sign and in block capitals uh, Y min. Okay, so minus dollar sign Y min, and now it's nicely, uh, it, it's level with the ground. But if I increase the uniform scale, you can see that it is not on the ground anymore. So we need to move the pivot as, as well. So let's go to pivot transform, and in here we'll type the same thing just without the minus at the beginning. So dollar sign Y min, again, block capitals. And now you can see that when I zoom in, uh, when I scale up and down, it will still be on the ground. So I want to scale it up just slightly so that the pig head can fit inside it. So maybe three. All right. And I'll also move it to the right so that it's straight underneath the pig head. Brilliant. And then once it's done, I of course want to create null, display it, and rename it to out container or out collider. Okay. And L and H. So we have the file, we have convert, then you can have poly reduce or subdivide. And then we have transform with a short expression and the null, which is displayed. Let's go back to the object level. And now when I play the simulation, well, first of all, you can see that the timeline didn't change color to orange, which means that none of the setting has changed. Uh, so even when you play it, you can see that nothing interacts with our uh, our container. So we need to add our container to our simulation and we can do that by going to the collision step and simply using static object. So select the container, click on static object, just click once. Now the blue uh, highlight will disappear from the timeline, so it means something has happened. So go inside Autodop Networks to see what happened. Okay, L and H, zoom in, and now you can see we have a new node called Static Object Collision Geometry. And if I expand that, you can see that our object path is linked to our collision geometry, so our, our node. Okay, so let's click on that to see where it is. Here we go. So this is our original node. Let's dive inside this network and see if anything has changed here. So yeah, so we have the null and then after the null, this is what Houdini added. So we have collision source, file cache and VDV. So let me zoom in. Okay. And display VDV. 
All right, so you can see that this is the representation of our container in VDB. It's not too much detail here. Uh, let me play the simulation and see how it looks now with the default settings. Okay, so you can see that the liquid just goes through the walls of the geometry, so nothing changes here. So let's change the first thing. So display VDBs, select collision source, and in here, when you go to volume, you will see we have voxel size, so similar to the emitter that we saw previously. And when you click on voxel size, on where it says voxel size, you'll see where it's linked to. So it's linked to Autodop Network, Collision Geo, Division Size. So let's see where that is. So Autodop Network, Collision Geo, Division Size. So I'll go back to the object level. Autodop Network, Collision Geo, and then scroll down. We do not have any Division Size here, so probably using the Collision tab, okay? Scroll down, here we go, Division Size. So uh, to see how that works, let's switch off display geometry so we're still in static object collision geo switch off display geometry and i'll also hide other objects here okay so that we don't see anything that is outside the autodop network scroll down to our collision tab and switch on collisions guide and now when we decrease the division size so also decrease the voxel size because these are linked you will start seeing this blue thing um, appearing here all right, and when I decrease it even more, now you will see that our object uh, appears. So this is what uh, the, the liquid will interact with. So now when I play it, you can see that the liquid goes inside the container. So exactly what we want. However, we cannot see it very well. So let's uh, switch off collision guide and go back to the object level. And in here, I can even switch off collision geometry so that we don't see it all right and now play the simulation okay cool so you can see that it's interacting nicely with the walls of the geometry however here again we can see our bounding box it's too small so let's go back to the autodop network and find the green node flip solver so that we can adjust the bounding box and now i want to uh, show all objects go back to the very first frame always make changes on the very first frame and this must be much much bigger here all right so let's play it again all right so now it works nicely but what you will sometimes find is that even though you decrease the voxel size so increase the uh, quality of the container the liquid is still going through the walls and there are several several ways you can fix it so first of all check if your uh, simulation is reset correctly so sometimes Houdini uh, forgot uh, forgets about the changes so then you need to go to uh, the object level select autodop network and click on the reset simulation okay so that's the first thing um, the second thing is inside autodop network and again in our collision geometry so let me switch on collision guide again and you can see that um, this container has some uh, walls but they are quite thin so if you have very thin walls on the container uh, the liquid will not notice them so what you will need to do uh, to fix it is offset surface so not that much just slightly Okay, so you can see that it offsets the surface, so makes the walls thicker, and sometimes that helps. Of course, for rendering, when you render out, you can still use your original container, so with the one with thin walls. The third thing is what we already mentioned. So the fact that flip fluids use both particles and volumes, particles and grit. So let me switch off collisions guide. And now let's go to flip fluid object node and look at our particle separation and grid scale again. So as I mentioned previously, by decreasing one of these values, you increase the quality, for example, of the emitter or of the simulation. And you can visualize that by going to, uh, to guides and then visualize collision, go to collision and switch on use plane. So let's play a few frames forward. And now you can switch on and off uh, use plane and now you will see how the container looks for Houdini. So first of all uh, we can see the bounding box and also only the regions that are currently simulated are highlighted blue. Okay so this is our plane where you can see the quality and this is 
our emitter and when I move the simulation, play the simulation, you can see that only some parts are highlighted blue. So this is what we should actually look at. And you can see that I can increase the quality of this container by decreasing grid scale or particle separation, that, but that will make my simulation super slow. And I do not want that for tests. So what you can do instead is switch on collision separation. And this allows you to set a separate value just for the collider. So it will not uh, multiply grid scale by, se by separation anymore. It will just use collision separation as a separate value. So now when I lower that value and play again, and this value needs to be lower than our initial particle separation because it's uh, 0 0.07 times one. So to see the difference, it needs to be lower than that. Uh, and now I play the simulation, you will see the difference. So now the container is nice full without any holes in it. Okay, great. So, we already know how to adjust the quality, so I can uh, decrease the quality of the liquid and also go to visualizations again and switch off collision. Okay, so we're just going back to how it was before. And now I want my collider, um, our vas or whatever that collider is, uh, to move to the left and then catch the other fluid as well. So let's go back to the object level go inside collision geometry and in here yeah we created a transform node so it should be quite easy to animate it so what i'm going to do is move to the very first frame hold down alt and click on the value i want to keyframe so in this case this one over here okay if you click on translate uh, it will switch from this to the actual value okay and also on the timeline we can see the keyframe so now i want to move for example, 25 frames and move the container. But if I move it now, uh, Houdini will try to simulate everything in between. So instead of clicking here, I will first click on this brain icon. Okay. And this will stop the simulation for a second. So for, for the time being. So now when I move to frame 25, I can just move the container to wherever I want. Is it in the good position? Okay, maybe like so, maybe even more. <laughs> okay, so position it. Uh, and now you need to hold down Alt again and click on the value. Okay, to set another keyframe. Now go back to the very first frame, switch on the simulation and play again. Okay, so what is happening here? Um, if I go back to the object level, you will see it better. Okay. We do not have our container, it's not moving. We still catch the, the liquid here, but the second liquid just falls. And this is because we just created a deforming object. So in our collisions tab, you can see we have static object and deforming object. Static object is the one that is not moving in our scene. It's not affected by gravity, it just stands there. So we put the vase uh, in the mid air, but it's not falling down because the gravity doesn't affect it. However, now we moved the geometry and we created a deforming object. So I mentioned the introduction that we have static, deforming and animated objects. So what's the difference between deforming and animated? Deforming object is an object that you animate inside the SOP network, so inside our, our geometry. So if you're using the transform node, for example, this is the deforming object. But if you animate that object in here, in our object level, Okay, so I can adjust these parameters over here. This will be an animated object. For simulations, I would hardly recommend uh, using deforming objects, so animating them inside the subgeometry, because sometimes uh, when you use uh, these parameters, you will have to link your geometry in a more complicated way. You will have to know how certain settings work. Uh, some of these parameters will not work straight away, so it's just a more complex way. So I'd I would really advise you using deforming objects. So for example, transform node and animating animating it in here. Okay, but how do we fix it now? We've already used the shelf tool called static object, so we cannot use another um, shelf tool on the same geometry. So instead of using the shelf tool, let's fix it manually. Let's go back to the object level, go to our Autodop network, and let's find our static object. 
Okay, scroll up and here you will see a few boxes um, and the first one is called use deforming geometry. So this is exactly what we want. So we will just switch this on and go back to the object level and now play. Okay, so you can see it works now, but it only caught part of the first liquid. So let me go back to the collision geometry again, select my transform node, switch off, um, switch off the simulation for a second. And now I will hold down shift and select this keyframe. And then by holding middle bounce button, I can move it slightly forward. Okay, so just a few frames, brilliant. Now I can go back to uh, the very first frame and play the simulation again, and now it should look uh, perfect. And that's it in part two. Now I invite you to watch part three, which is adding forces. See you soon.